Good morning. Welcome to channel 411. Today we are going to tackle the installation of a tank style toilet. This is a floor mounted toilet and um, you know what there's not a lot of steps to it but uh, we're going to get through it and uh, you'll see how easy it is. So as you can see we have a water supply here and we are going to take that valve off, shut off the water supply, take the valve off and install an escutcheon. It's uh, very important to install the escutcheon for aesthetic purposes, so don't forget to do that. And we see the drain for the toilet. This particular drain is 4 inch diameter and it's uh, piped in ABS. This pipe runs down to a 4 by 3 elbow. Because for a tank type toilet, uh, codes here uh, state that you only need three inches for your drain. However, the way I pipe these is I like to use a four by three toilet flange. So if you're using this, this type of toilet flange has a lot of flexibility. If you're going to use this one, you can actually pipe a three inch plain end pipe, ABS pipe into the hub here or the way I have it set up is that I can pipe this flange to the inside diameter of this 4 inch ABS which mates this mating surface here. So I'll go ahead and install that now. What you want to make sure of when you're installing these is that you are square, I don't know if you can see that line, this line is square, 90 degree angle with the wall um, adjacent to it on the left or perpendicular with the wall. The toilet is going to sit this way and it's going to run this way. So you want these two lines to be parallel with this wall so that the toilet sits perpendicular to that wall. As far as floor preparation, as you can see, this is a tile floor, ceramic tile floor. I want to have that flange relatively flush with the floor, which makes for an easier installation on the, uh, for the toilet. If it's sitting above the floor, some toilets may not accept that method. Well, again, we want to have this, the top of this flange, when it goes into the pipe down below, we want to have the top of that flange flush with the tile floor. To install this flange, you want to make sure that you've cleaned and dried the inside surface, in this case, of your ABS pipe to make sure that the glue is going to take and hold and obviously clean the mating surface of your flange as well before you put the glue. You're going to want to use ABS glue for this job as it is ABS pipe and you want to put the glue on both the pipe and the fitting, that being the flange fitting. Now you're going to want to remove this cap. Um, I prefer to remove it prior to installing the flange. However, if you're going to leave this flange and sitting for a while while you're doing your finish work, um, then you it's better off to uh, leave the cap on, but I'm going to break it off now so that I'm not pounding on it uh, while it's installed. Either way, doesn't really matter. Um, I prefer to take it off. Alright, so we got the flange on and I uh, just want to give a word of advice while we're here at this step. Always, always, always have rags with you. Uh, the bigger, the better. Uh, reason being is you can, you can use them to wipe up spills, wipe up glue, take the glue off your hands, paint, whatever. But for this project, definitely gonna to wanna to have a towel um, with you to sop up water, whatever, as you're draining fittings, draining piping. It's just, to kneel on even, it's just, it's always your best friend on any project. Grab a rag, use it. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is position the toilet over the drain flange, just to make sure that you're rough in was correct. You'll know right away if your roughing wasn't correct because the back of the toilet will be touching your wall. But in this case it looks like I'm going to have plenty of room. This is a 12 inch rough-in toilet. I roughed this in for 
13 and a half inches rough. So I've got plenty of room back there. Hopefully not too much room, but we'll see once the tank comes on or gets on. But anyway, don't, uh, don't avoid this step before you even put the tank on. Just make sure that uh, you put it on top of the flange, position it correctly with the holes lined up, um, and uh, check your, your clearances. Next step would be to install your T-bolts. I've pulled the toilet off as I was just checking to see if uh, it was going to fit for my rough in and now I'm going to install the T-bolts. These particular T-bolts come with retainer clips or retainer nuts which is a nice feature because it holds your T-bolts upright not jiggly jaggly as you're trying to get a heavy toilet onto the flange. So I'll do that next. This is the flange with the T-bolts installed as you can see you just install the T-bolts, one end of the T-bolts, the wide end, into this slot, slide it in, same on this side, slide it back, tighten the retainer clips, and that's that step. Looking at the wax ring, uh, this is the ring that provides the seal between the toilet base and the flange. And I typically like to install it onto the flange itself. Some guys like to put it onto the toilet, stick it on the base of the toilet, push it down onto the flange. I prefer to line it up in the flange, line my toilet up with the T-bolts, press down firmly and evenly on both sides. You want to make sure that you're pressing down on the toilet evenly, otherwise you might break the water seal. So I'm going to do that now. Forgot to mention that if you are replacing an old toilet. When you take off the old toilet, you're going to see this wax ring completely compressed on the flange. It's not a pretty sight and the worst part about it is you have to clean that off. Take a screwdriver, don't, pr don't press too hard on the screwdriver or a putty knife, some gloves and soap if necessary and peel all that old um, wax ring off. It's imperative that you get the old wax ring off. This being a new installation, I didn't have to do that. So don't forget that step if you're replacing an old toilet. Make sure it comes off completely or you lose your wax or you lose your water seal. Okay, so I've set the toilet down. As you can see, the T-bolts have gone through the actual toilet flange. This is the toilet flange. And you can see that I've got the bolts straight through. You want to take a look, step back, make sure the toilet is sitting square to its world. This looks pretty good. Probably able to tell a little more when I get the tank on. And that brings up another point. A lot of guys like to install the toilet tank onto the toilet before uh, they put the toilet, set the toilet down. Um, I've done it both ways. Um, if the toilet's not too big, not too heavy, I'll set the tank onto the toilet bowl and install it that way. Um, but this being the case, I think most people who are doing it for the first time would rather do it this way. Have the bowl set and then install the tank. But again, if there's not much room back there, you may prefer to put the tank on in an area where you've got access. And then if you're you know, strong enough, put the entire bowl and tank assembly down, set it down onto your wax ring. I'm going to fasten the toilet down with the supplied nuts and install the caps. Here's a look at the toilet now with the plastic T-bolt nuts installed. I have one on the other side as well. You want to make sure of course that you torque them down evenly. Don't torque them too tight or you risk breaking the toilet bowl flange. Um, it, it takes a little bit of a feel. If you, want to, if you want to find out how tight to do it, perhaps maybe head over to, the, to a toilet in your house that's already installed, back it off a little bit to see how tight it is. Um, but really just, just, just get, it, get it snug and you'll know, you'll know. You don't want to, again, you don't want to risk breaking that flange. So the, the cord of caps simply just snap over top of those nuts for a cosmetically nice look. 
they just they simply come off like that and snap on and that's uh that finishes off a look at the bottom now we turn to the tank this particular tank is completely assembled there are no guts or pieces to install here um, it's a an american standard toilet the one thing you need to do is grab this gasket and install it on that nut that's the gasket that creates a seal between the tank and the bowl now these bolts are already installed they tighten up through these holes we install washers at the bottom and the, the nuts as well onto the bolts once we've got the tank installed on top of the bowl it even comes with a handy torque wrench plasticky thing to uh, tighten it down what we have to do with this particular model is ensure that we make we tight we tighten these the bolts to the nuts and ensure that we make a china to china contact once we've made that contact a seal is assured on this model we're going to do that right now we've got our tank on about as tight as we can get it looks to be making contact china to china tank to bowl so the next step will be to install our braided stainless steel connection from our water supply to our inlet underneath the tank we're gonna do that now you're gonna to want to remember that when you're tightening your 3 8 end onto your water supply yeah, you, you can use a wrench and, and make it about as tight as a hose connection to any lawn sprinkler probably a little tighter okay so now that we've got the toilet connected on both ends we're gonna turn the water supply on and when we do that the tank will start to fill that's what we want but while we're doing that we're gonna check for leaks at both connection points and between the toilet and the bowl All right, I'm gonna check the leaks. So the tank is still filling. There doesn't appear to be any leaks at the connection points to the toilet and to the supply. Tank is just about full. Bowl isn't full. We're gonna, we're gonna do our first flush on this thing. Oh, it looks like it needs an adjustment. Okay, okay, so we've adjusted our water level with the water level adjustment knob right there. We turned it counterclockwise and that pushes the float down, which makes it float higher, thus shutting off the ball cock uh, valve, thus shutting off the water supply. So now we're about to attempt our first flush on this toilet. See how she works. Again, looking for leaks everywhere. At any connection point, you want to look for leaks. Feel around the inlet, feel around the supply. Looks good. Between the tank and bowl, looks good. All right, so um, you check all that stuff. We'll install the seat next and we'll get to that step next so for the seat you've got your hinge here and uh, you've got to install these gaskets into the hinge here I've already done one and I'm going to do that one next when I put the camera down then you've got your nuts your bolts and your stainless steel washers now these washers you can use different ones depending see you can see their centers are 
a little off. So depending on how far forward you want the seat or how far backward you want the seat, you can use different washers up on top of the hinge. So we'll do that now. So I like a nice tight slick look on my toilet seats. Therefore I have decided to put the washers favoring forward. That pulls the seat inward. I've already put a bolt in one side. Now I'm going to drop the bolt in on the other side. Install the nuts. These go away. Install those nuts and it's done. So, um, toilet's installed. Nuts, bolts are tightened up. Flip forward this cover. Snap it in. And you've got a seat installed on your American Standard toilet. This is a non-slam seat cover. Not sure if I like it, but of course if you don't like your toilet seat, you can always change it. And again, check for leaks. No leaks at all connection points. Now that this business is taken care of, I've got to take care of some other business. So uh, thanks for watching, Channel 411.